Hey folks, Galen from Canadian Whiteboard Finance here. Uh, just beginning a lot of questions lately about applying for life insurance during times of physical distancing. So uh, for future generations that may be watching this, uh, right now we're going through a very interesting time where um, people are not allowed to be near each other if they're not in the same family and household. And so recently what that means for insurance companies is um, sometimes part of a life insurance application with someone doing a uh, blood draw or an in-person uh, para paramedical physical. Those aren't happening at the moment as I'm speaking, but the companies are figuring out how to work with the situation. And so today I'm just gonna go over a couple things. I'm gonna go over um, these couple things. So uh, how to figure out how much life insurance you need, how to apply for it online and how you get the contract uh, in these um, in these times. So first off, I mean, first and foremost, you know, what I like helping people figure out is how much do they need? Because um, I like it when people get the right amount in place and um, they don't end up with more than they need and they end up with the right amount. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, so the first the questions I first ask people when they get in front of me. So the first thing is to ask a question and it's not exactly the funnest question in the world, but it is something to consider. And that is that um, the question is, is if you were to, if you had passed away yesterday, who would be impacted today financially and to what extent? So by that, I mean, you know, who in your life, um, if, if, you'd, if you, so I'll just talk about myself. If I had passed away yesterday, to, today, financially impacted would be my wife, uh, so for people, it's wife, husband, spouse, partner, um, you know, uh, my kids would be financially impacted for a lot of people. Maybe there's a business partner that would be financially impacted. Sometimes people think of their charity as being financially impacted. Um, so, uh, or church, if they give to their church con consistently, um, you know, for most people it's, it's, it's the top, it's immediate family, you know, spouse, partner, kids, um, people that would be financially impacted. And uh, to figure out how much, um, so the next question then is, you know, so the question is, is who would be impacted today financially and to what extent? So what I ask people is I say, what would you want to have happen? What would actually happen? And is there a gap? Is, you know, is, is what you want to have happen? What would actually happen? And I mean, it is worthy of note that I don't just help people with um, passing away for some, you know, for a lot of people. I also put into place plans such that if something were to happen to them, if they got hurt or if they got sick, also what would happen financially. So, I'll, I mean, today I'm not going to talk about illness. I'm going to talk about passing away. away. And I mean, the other parts of it are illness and injury are the two big things that can, two of the big things, or an emergency. That's the other one. I won't go into that today. Uh, that's more of the full financial planning that I do with people. Um, so... You know, if, if you had, uh, I'll say passed away, if you had passed away yesterday, who would be impacted to what extent? What would be the ideal thing that you'd want to happen, have happen financially in a less than ideal situation? So ideally, what would you want? So when people say, you know, I, I want to make sure that my spouse is taken care of, I want to make sure that my partner, my children, you know, usually people are saying things like, um, you know, I'd want to make sure that my, you know, mortgage is paid off. I'd want to make sure that my funeral expenses are covered. I'd want to make sure that um, my kids could still go to school if I'm the breadwinner in the family, that sort of thing. Um, you know, uh, in my case, when I bought my first life insurance policy, one of the reasons I bought it was because I did, my wife was in a job she hated. And if I passed away and she didn't have my income, she'd probably never be able to quit that job. So, I mean, that's a bit of a unique situation, but, um, you know, for some people it is like not having to take a second job. Um, so, you know, uh, keeping to one job or maybe if someone's not working, they wouldn't have to start working. Um, so cheaping job or not having to work. Um, so those are the things. Now, then you you say like what would happen so this is what would ideally happen and then what would actually happen um and is there a difference now in order to help out with that a little bit what i then do is i say okay what are the numbers associated with this so just to give an example uh you know someone might come to me and say well um you know especially someone in a big city like i'm licensed i'm licensed in uh all of ontario all of british columbia so people in vancouver and toronto it's not uncommon that people are getting in front of me and they say I've, they've got $500,000 uh, on the left on a mortgage. 
Um, funeral expenses, you know, that's easily, um, I'll say 10, you know, everyone's different, but I'll say 10, uh, making sure they want their kids to end up going to school, um, that they would have wanted their RESPs to keep going. Um, so that's easily, um, you know, I'll just, I'm just throwing numbers out, you know, like numbers like a hundred thousand, maybe, uh, if the kids are young enough, they can invest that money and then have enough to go to school, um, keeping up jobs. So another thing that, you know, life insurance really, it shouldn't be called life insurance. Um, because car insurance, if, if, if you smash up your car, you get a new one. House insurance, if it burns down, you get a new one. Life, pass away, you don't get a new one. It doesn't replace your life. It replaces the money that you would have brought in had you continued to live under normal circumstances. So it's really usually income insurance. It's keep the house insurance financially, you know, pay off the mortgage insurance, that sort of thing. Uh, so I really think that, you know, if they had to go back and rename it, it would have a different name. So a lot of times people just say to me like, well, you know, in my case, I'm 41. <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna work for another 20 years. So my income for the next 10 to 20 years, I would want that to be covered. Uh, because if I were here, I'd be working for the next 20 years. But if I'm not, I'd want my income to be covered. So that's another thing. So if someone's making, let's say $100,000 a year, and they say that they want to have 10 years of that replaced, then um, that's kind of like the overall, you know, another overall number that people might, um, might bring to the table. But I'll leave it as um, kind of broken down item per item. Um, so, yeah, I mean, mortgage funeral kids, actually, I'll leave it there because keeping, uh, if, if I want my spouse to not have to either take a job she doesn't like or having to take a second job, um, that's a big part of that is going to be replacing my income. So, you know, so we add all that up. Pretty specific number there. <laughs> what was it, 1,610, something like that? Great. Now we apply for that and you find out if you qualify or not. Now, uh, right now, as I was saying, uh, so the way it would normally happen um, is, well, I shouldn't say normally. I've been doing online meetings for years. Um, right now they're all happening online because of uh, physical distancing. So to talk a little bit about how, it's, um, how to apply for life insurance right now uh, is that the way I usually do it uh, right now. So the person uh, comes to me, uh, quote unquote, comes to me virtually. Um, we figure out how much they need. We go through that exercise of how much they need. Then there's me over here. I have a slightly oval head. Um, and then we meet, we meet virtually. Usually the way that I like to do it is webcam um, because that way I can see the person, they can see me. Uh, you know, um, I can make sure that they're you know, paying attention and we're, we're both on board. Um, and then I usually do share my screen. So if I've got the screen up and I'm asking the health questions, it's right there. Um, so they can see the questions that I'm asking, speeds things up a little bit. Now, you can talk a little bit about the amounts right now. Um, so because, so it's whether someone needs a paramedical or not is dependent upon their age and the amount that they're asking for. So because once it's issued, it's a legally binding contract. So the insurance companies wanna make sure that the people who are applying um, are in relatively good health um, and qualify. Excuse me. Um, so I show them the questions, we go through the questions, and one of two things is gonna happen at the end of that questionnaire. One of, the, uh, one of the possibilities is you are approved for life insurance right now. The other option is we need time to think about it. So I'll draw a little clock here, and we're gonna get back to you. You know, maybe we need to talk to your doctor, maybe, uh, maybe we're gonna have to wait until all this is over uh, to do a paramedical. For the people for whom that's um, approved right then and there, what they do is they get an email, and the email asks them to verify their identity. And when they verify their identity, it comes back and it's issued via email. They start paying for it and the contract is in place. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a doctor reach out to me who had been thinking about life insurance and decided that it was time for him to get some because he has kids and mortgage. And within about 45 minutes, they had a, uh, an issued contract um, ready to go. For other people, sometimes if they need, if they need more time, then sometimes they come back and um, they either have to wait until they can do the paramedicals or they have to wait until um, the, uh, or they have to talk to the doctor or other things. And in that case, um, we'll just have to wait to see the decision. Now, what's happening right now is different um, ages can be issued different amounts right now. So, um, you know, the younger someone is, the more they can apply for right now without needing medical underwriting. Um, the numbers have changed a little bit just because of what we're going through. The companies are adjusting as we go. So for someone who is um, in the 18 to 40 year old range, 
40 year old range they can apply for two up to two million dollars of coverage and i'm not saying this is guaranteed like i just want to make that complete like depending on someone's health questions they may or may not qualify but um, a lot of people what i'm doing is we're saying let's just find out so for that age bracket uh, it's two million um, which is a fairly decent amount um, i certainly have clients that have uh, requested more than that um, but uh, that's that's a fairly decent amount and then what i should say also is like you know recently i had some clients apply and it wasn't as much as they wanted they wanted uh, over two million and they're over 40. what we did is we got them a million in place which is the limit i'll put that up here right now uh, the limit is uh so 41 to 50. Is, the limit is one million come on hold on And the limit for, let's see, 51 to 55, shouldn't be drawing this big, is 500,000, 51 to 55. So I mean, the important thing is, is to, and I'll just draw the rest of the boxes, uh, 56 to 64 is 100,000, and 65 plus is 50,000. Now, um, the important thing to know is just, you know, once you figure out the amount that you need, then uh, if it's under this number, then you apply for it. If it's over this number, you apply for what you can get. And then after things are normalized, you can apply for the rest. Or if anything changes around the decisions, um, you apply for the rest. Uh, let's see, uh, 56, 64. Um, so 51 to 55 was up to 500,000. I should have clarified up to like you don't have to get half a million <laughs> uh, it's how much you need that's what you get uh, so here a uh, hundred thousand and this is either type of insurance I'm not going to go into the different types of insurance right now but this is whole life or participating life uh, sorry whole life or term and then the last one is fifty thousand all right and that was uh, 65 plus So, if you have any questions, let me know. I uh, hope this has been helpful. Uh, I gotta so I'll pull it back a little bit so you can see. Uh, so the question really is, you know, first off, this is one of the things that can happen where someone can be impacted f uh, financially. Illness, injury, and emergency uh, is obviously other ones. Um, you, so the question is, is, if you had passed away yesterday, who would be impacted today financially and to what extent? For a lot of people, it's a spouse, it's a partner, kids, sometimes it's a business partner, sometimes charity or church and or sometimes grandkids even depending if someone's taking care of their grandkids um, then you look at what are the things uh, the other thing that i didn't mention was that if um, you know you take this total amount and you do subtract if you have any existing insurance obviously like if someone comes to me and they need 1.6 total sorry 1 million six hundred thousand total uh, but they have some insurance in place already let's say they already have um, just as an example half a million dollars then they wouldn't apply for the full amount they would apply for the full amount minus that so let's uh, say one million one hundred and ten I think that was the number we we're looking at they'd apply for that so you don't have to apply you know like if you already have some you reduce it unless it's unless it's insurance that should be replaced um, I don't normally replace insurance but sometimes people come to me and they have insurance uh, so you know if they've got it a long time ago sometimes the prices are actually have actually lowered since they took it out I'm not saying that's happened for everyone uh, but it has lowered it has lowered for a lot of people over the last little bit um, I have a client who applied years ago and they replied again or if someone's lost a lot of weight since they last applied and if they had had a rating on that so then it's a question of um, figuring out how much you need then it's having the virtual meeting verifying your identity paying for the contract getting it or being told to wait those are the options and then these are the different amounts that someone can apply for uh, for the different age amounts right now anyways take care hope this has been helpful if you have any questions let me know in the comments